Lord, the people praise you. Lord, the people praise you. Lift you up and raise you. Lift you up and raise you. Cause you are the Holy One. You are the Holy One. Oh, you're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. And Lord, the people love you. Lord, the people love you. Place nobody above you. Place nobody above you. Cause you are the Holy One. You are the Holy One. Oh, you're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. So we're singing Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Here and now, we will praise you right here and now. Lest the hills and the rocks cry out, Lest the hills and the rocks cry out. Cause you are the Holy One. You are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. So we're singing Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Ten thousand hands. If we had ten thousand hands, we would bless you as you command. We would bless you as you command. Cause you are the Holy One. You are the Holy One. Oh, you're the one. You're the only one. You're the one. You're the only one. And if we had ten thousand tongues, if we had ten thousand tongues, we would bless you with everyone. We would bless you with everyone. Cause you. So we're singing Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Oh, all the glory is due you. All the glory is due you. Cause you are the Holy One. You are the Holy One. Oh, you're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. So we're singing Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, all the glory is due you. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I'm assuming most of you have played the game Follow the Leader. It's actually not really much of a game. If you think about it, there's not like a winner or a loser and there's really only one rule. You do whatever the leader does. Children love this game, right? Because it's like a moment where they get to be in charge and get people to do whatever they want. So if they want everyone to bark like a dog, guess what? If you're playing follow the leader, you bark like a dog. If they want everyone to jump on one leg, they can get everybody to jump on one leg. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a silly game. But if you're a disciple of Jesus, then in some way, we can make the argument, we're still playing that game. We're still playing follow the leader. Jesus is our leader. And whatever we see him doing 
That's what we try to do and what we try to imitate. You know, for our midweek series, for most of this year, really, we've been going through the book called The Character of Jesus, or most of you may have encountered this book through the title, Jesus the Same by Charles Edward Jefferson. And each chapter looks at a different facet of Jesus's character, something for us to look at and try to imitate, to follow the leader. We've looked at the brotherliness of Jesus. We've looked at how he's trusted in God, the narrowness of his conviction, the breadth of his love and and vision, and so many other things, things that we can, again, start putting into practice. And I hope we never lose that as disciples, that as disciples, we always want to be more and more like Jesus. We keep our eyes fixed on him so we can become more like him. It's been so encouraging throughout this pandemic, since we haven't been able to meet together in person, to see so many people deciding to make Jesus Lord of their life and being baptized here in the Midpoint Ministry Center. The other day, we were able to go to a baptism, and it's so cool just seeing the excitement that people feel as they're about to get into the waters of baptism. For those of you who've been baptized, do you remember that day for you and what it was like? Do you remember the excitement you felt uh, knowing you're about to start this new life of following Jesus? I remember for me just wondering about, okay, who is God going to put in my path that I can help become a disciple? In what ways will God work in my life to help the kingdom grow and expand and just being so fired up? about what the future held in this new life as a disciple following Jesus. I was thinking about John 1 and the disciples uh, being called to follow Jesus and all the emotions that must have stirred up in them when they spent a day with Jesus. Let's read this in John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, it says in verse 35, The next day John was there again with two of his disciples. And when he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. And when the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you'll see. So they went and saw where he was staying. And they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. And if you go on reading, you find out that they come to the conviction he's the Messiah. So Andrew goes and finds Peter, his brother, and says, you got to come check this guy out. We found the Messiah. Uh, Philip goes and finds Nathaniel and says, you got to check this guy out. We found the Messiah. Now, it says here that two disciples of John the Baptist ended up following Jesus. It names one of them as Andrew, and some people have speculated as to who the second one was. But um, some think it might have been the author of the Gospel of John, uh, since he doesn't like to name himself. Now, we don't know that for sure, and I'm not saying that that's necessarily who it is, but if it was John then here he is several decades later remembering that day where he spent the day with Jesus. Remembering that day that became a fork in the road to his life where he started on a new path and a new trajectory. Do you remember that day for you? Perhaps it was when someone invited you to church or or when they invited you to study the Bible. That day you sat down for that Bible study and you opened up the scriptures and your world was just shaken to the core and you were so deeply moved. Maybe it was the day when you walked into the church service and you saw the fellowship of believers and you saw how they were loving each other and treating each other and you heard the singing and you could feel their faith through the singing, and you heard the preaching, and you were just absolutely blown away. Here, whoever's writing this is re- recounting it decades later. If it's not John, uh, or if John wasn't the second um, uh, uh, disciple to follow John, either way, they're recounting this amazing day they spent with Jesus and how it changed everything for them. I often think about how cool it would be to spend a day with Jesus, 
to if we could get in Bill and Ted's phone booth and time travel back in time and just spend a day in Jesus's ministry and see how he interacted with people. Like I would imagine seeing Jesus's body language as he interacted with someone, as he talked with them, to, to hear him speak, to hear him deliver a sermon. I mean, later in John, these guys are sent to arrest Jesus. They don't arrest him because they find Jesus preaching and they start listening and go, no one ever has talked like this man. Like they were just so blown away by his speaking, they wouldn't even arrest him. Imagine getting to be in the audience and hear him preach. Imagine spending a day with Jesus and having a quiet time with him, having a prayer time with Jesus, getting to hear him pray to his father. Imagine how intimidated you would feel having to pray in front of Jesus after he just prayed. You're like, this is no, no way this is going to be as good as what Jesus just said, right? Being able to look at scripture and read scripture with Jesus and, and hear him, how he interprets it and how he, what he's getting out of it and hear what instruction he gleans from it. I mean, this would be amazing to spend a day with Jesus. I mean, how many of us right now through this pandemic, through all that has gone on this year, just go, Jesus, I need the peace you give. Can we just spend some time together? What I think is amazing is the answer to that is yes, absolutely you can. See, at the end of the Great Commission in Matthew 28, after he tells his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, he says, and surely I am with you all always, to the very end of the age. What's interesting is he uses the present tense there. He's not, I will be with you. At some point in the future, I will come back and be with you. He says, I am with you always. Right now, wherever you are uh, watching this, as a disciple of Jesus, Jesus is with you. As I sit here in this room giving this lesson, Jesus is with me. And it's interesting, we know the call of a disciple in Luke 9.23. Jesus says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. And so if Jesus is with us, this means we can follow him today. We can, we can spend a day with Jesus. We can spend many days, the rest of our days, with Jesus. And when we come across a scripture like Luke 9, 23, where it says, deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow him, I think sometimes we interpret that as, okay, so I need to not do what I want to do, and I need to follow the teachings of Jesus today, and the example he laid out when he was here on earth. I need to try to imitate that somehow. And and that's, I think, a very accurate, good, right interpretation of what Jesus is saying. But I also want to encourage you to spiritually perceive that when you go about your day, Jesus is with you. Like sometimes we talk about, hey, would you watch that program if Jesus was sitting right next to you? And while I think there's a lot of good that can come from that kind of thinking, I want us to start also thinking about It's not if Jesus was standing or sitting right next to me, that as a disciple, Jesus is with me. His presence is here. So it's not an as if Jesus were here. No, Jesus is here. So am I going to follow the leader? If you could see that Jesus was with you when you woke up tomorrow morning, how would you spend your morning? If you could see that Jesus was with you and is with you when you go to work, whether that's actually going someplace to work or just working out of your home office now or whatever, how how would that affect how you talk to your boss, how you talk to your coworkers, how, how you write an email to your colleagues? If you could see that Jesus is with you, what would, how, how would that affect how you talk to your spouse? How you talk to your kids as maybe they come in and interrupt you or 
they can ask a lot of you, or maybe they say something disrespectful, or maybe they ask a deep, meaningful question. If you could see Jesus is with you, will you have the courage to follow the leader? As you perhaps cross paths somehow with your neighbor, we follow the leader. We see Jesus is with me, and Jesus came to seek and save the lost. You cross paths with the neighbor. Will you have the courage to follow the leader and do what Jesus would do and do what Jesus does in those kinds of moments? Spending a day with Jesus is the most riveting way to spend your day. This is something I've been trying to do more and more, just to have on my mind, Jesus is with me. I need to follow the leader. And I'm telling you, when I'm in touch with that, although I don't do it perfectly, but when I'm tuned in and locked into that, the lost are on my heart way more. I find myself wanting to read my Bible way more, learn more about God, think and dwell on God, pray to God. I find myself being more patient, not just in my words or in the tone of my voice, but be more patient in my heart and in my mind. I feel more at peace knowing that Jesus is with me and I just need to follow the leader. Uh, I've also found, though, that I watch less TV, that I'm less attracted to um, browsing the internet. I'm certainly way less attracted to, to going through anything on social media. Like When you decide to spend your day with Jesus and say, He's with me, I'm going to follow His lead, It's amazing the things that start changing in your heart and in your mind, in your words, in your attitudes, in your actions and interactions with other people. And so this is just a little aside. This isn't a chapter from Jesus the same or the character of Jesus. But as we look at the character of Jesus and we're amazed at it, I want to challenge all of us to actually wholeheartedly try to imitate Jesus. Try to conform our character to look like his character. And I think one of the best ways to do this is to spend a day with Jesus. And so I want to challenge you. Tomorrow, spend the day with Jesus. Spiritually perceiving that he is with you. And as you perceive that, as you think about that, as that's on your mind, have the courage to follow the leader. Whatever Jesus would do in the moments you you have throughout your day, you do what Jesus does. And then guess what happens when you wake up the next day? You spend that day with Jesus. Because discipleship is denying self, carrying our cross daily, and following Him. May we have the courage and the faith to follow Jesus every single day to spend each day with Him, and to Him be the glory. Amen.